Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. It's Beaky from the Untitled Game Show and the Elder Scrolls Legends Central. We're back with another card review and discussion. For today, we'll be looking at the Gardener of Sword from the Madhouse Collection. And of course, some of you guys will not agree with my opinions on this card, so discuss it in the comment section down below. So let's talk about this card right here from its art, its effects, its cost, its rarity, and overall how good it is for the future of the game and how does it currently play for me and other people out there. Now, Garden of Swords art is one of the best I've seen in the game when it links to the actual name of the card. He is literally going down there with a smile on his face, looking like he's gonna garden and take that sword out of the ground. Like, what is going on here? Why does he enjoy this? Isn't it dangerous? Look at his arms, his clothes. They're all ripped up, shoveled. It just looks like He's been through some stuff, but he's not having a bad time doing it. And I really just like how this card looks. I would love to know the lore behind this card. Is there something in the Elder Scrolls franchise that I just don't know about where this guy comes from? Or was it something original thought up by the developers themselves? I don't know where this is from, but I really like how it looks. And I really like that he's actually a red guard as well, because I don't play enough with the red card creatures overall in my decks. Now... Overall, the art is great, but there's something really special about this card. It's an effect. It's an effect. It's insane. When I first read this, I was like, this has amazing potential. When you equipped an item to another creature, equipped a copy to Garden of Swords. Mind-blowing effect right there, guys. So let's say if you equipped a Maple Shield to another creature, instantly Garden of Sword gets a Maple Shield as well. Now, Garden of Sword is one of those cards that has one attack, one defense when it's summoned. Your opponents will want to kill this card as fast as humanly possible because they're obviously thinking that you're going to be playing with a item deck. Now, this is where Garden of Swords can be very valuable. I will not say build your whole entire deck about around Garden of Swords. You need to build an overall good deck that features Garden of Swords, that feature items, but I shouldn't. you shouldn't try to base your deck all around just these cards right here because I've seen very quickly that when I do it and when other people do it, I know that I got to destroy those creatures as soon as possible if somebody's using them against me, or if I am using them, I always have other cards to support Garden of Swords in case it gets lost. So for me guys, I will always tell you, don't build your complete deck around Garden of Swords, but you definitely can equip them with enough items using stuff like Plunder, um, if you're using a red and deck from Strength, and I mean like there's other great cards from the red side like Bone Blow, which if you equip a Bone Blow onto another creature, then you got two silences. And my favorite thing to equip Garden of Swords with is in Mace of Encumbrance. This thing allows you to shackle an enemy creature and so having like one garden of swords or two garden of swords and having a mix of encumbrance on the field you may be able to shackle three creatures on the opponent's side and they go for a direct attack after that which will work out really darn well for you guys in the end overall it's an absolutely excellent card to combo with a lot of other items out there in the game if you want to try for a really fun combo you could try to combo garden of swords with stuff like high finger marauder from the willpower side he has an ability that every single time a rune is broken, that creature that broke the rune gets an item. So if you could get that to also equipped onto Garden of Sword, that might be a really fun effect to do. Unfortunately, Garden of Sword is so situational with the items that he's not going to be valuable for everybody who uses an intelligence deck. It's definitely just going to be if you have enough items in that deck. If you're playing with something like with Strength where you do have um, Plunder and you could get items really easily, that's going to work out really well for you. And your opponents are going to try to destroy this card at very, very quickly so i do highly recommend you have ways to defend it by using stuff like shackle or guards out there just to really keep this card alive i do say this card gets powerful very quickly like once you start rolling with this card you get very strong very fast so i highly recommend that anybody playing against this card to eliminate it, silence it as soon as possible. And I will say that its cost could be higher. It could be a four cost rare card instead of a three cost, um, I mean epic card, instead of it being a three cost rare card. It should be epic, it should cost more because it is a dangerous card if left on check. So it might be slightly unbalanced currently in the meta. I mean, down the line, once there's more cards to destroy monsters, to silence monsters, it will be perfectly fine. But I could have seen this card cost four Magicka and be an epic rarity uh, just because it gets powerful really quickly if it's left unchecked at a three cost magic. Uh, overall, I love the art of this card. I love its effect. 
I love playing with this card, but I could see it being come unfair very easily. I've had situations where this card's gotten super strong for me. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Peace out, guys.